South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. How are you, Dan? I'm so good. It's a Thursday. It's a throwback Thursday, and I'll tell you why. Because if you guys want to see a new side to Bonnie Mbuli on Afternoon <laughs> Express, the very composed, the very poised, the very talented, break it down and dirty on Instagram. <laughs> Go check out Afternoon Express's Instagram page. There's lots of action happening from the throwback from yesterday Absolutely. with Bonnie in the show. How no, are you? I'm, I'm generally quite a shy and reserved person, but um, I think when I'm safe, Mm -hmm. and I feel safe around people, then I go crazy. I just make, I just make you feel very unsafe in front of the whole country. <laughs> then every time there's music for the show, we're like, eh, well, eh. <laughs> Body let's rip, hey? So go and check out the Instagram page. It's going to be awesome. Today's show is also as, as awesome as Bonnie's dance moves. She's best known uh, as the crazy Dintle from Scandal. But off screen, our guest today, Mapa Seka, is a budding entrepreneur and was recently listed on Forbes Africa's Under 30 for 2018. So she's somebody to look out for. Uh, definitely. And it's also another Fashion Thursday. And today we catch up with award-winning contemporary designer, Rich Nisi. My personal favorite, uh -huh. who just released his latest collection inspired by his late great-grandmother. He's also brought some items to show us. And take a listen to this. It's super embarrassing. You know your genetics let you down when our producer says to me, like, Dan, why don't you wear the clothes? And then designers go, he's too short. <laughs> That's when you know, Did right? that really happen? Is no, that a thing? Yeah, it was. The producer was like, no, you're too short to wear the clothing, unfortunately. Oh, my God. We're dragged on the floor. Shade. This so stuff is shade. amazing. just doesn't fit on me. In the kitchen today, <laughs> Chef Clem is taking us on a... Mm. <laughs> I love it's on. soup. Yeah, right? Okay, I'll get you out of that kitchen. <laughs> we hope you've all been keeping up with the action on Presenter Search on 3. And in tonight's episode, the remaining contestants are, giving, are given the task of taking over top billing. And apparently, there's some big twists in store. Mm, not to be missed. We want to know on social media today, Perhaps we're going to do this cross-pollination thing where we tell you tell us what your favorite moments on Presenter Search on 3 have been so far. Has anything particularly stood out for you? You can tweet those moments to our handle. It's at Afternoon Chat. And then don't forget to use the hashtag Afternoon Express. There's also our Facebook page. There'll be a post there for you to go and send your comments on. Yeah. Our first guest is well known for playing the deceitful and manipulative Dean Kle in <laughs> Scandal. But off screen, Mapaseka Kutre Nyokong is the polar opposite to her character, a hardworking entrepreneur. She's recently opened her own health food restaurant in Santon Yay. Indeed. She's also a mother and avid blogger with her own online platform dedicated to mums. But anyone who knows her uh, and who follows her on Instagram will know that she posts the most hilarious sketches yeah. and literally we can't get enough of them. Welcome to the Friday Fandahanagotli I'm worried. <laughs> if that's me, then I, I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm telling the truth. It's the truth. People went to Deben July, so we're taking out spirits. Mm -hmm. There were spirits yeah. then. Yes, they definitely. Back with them. Yes. <laughs> it's good to have such a like a prolific actress on the couch. Not because I we love your work on Scandal, because we do, and it's freaking awesome. But I think just particularly your journey towards this field of acting and your and your road to entrepreneurship has been so unconventional, yeah. and yeah. it's been so much hard work. Definitely. Tell me about your journey from studies to couldn't afford studies any longer to ending up on one of the coolest soapies like you said it was not easy at all mm. I'm, I'm a girl from Bloemfontein who always wanted to be an actress mm. and also I think one of the challenges in my life was trying to put funds together to go study mm -hmm. you know when your mother is looking at you and they know that you love this thing of acting mm -hmm. and they can't afford to take you to school mm. I think that was one of my challenges in life but that's my mom but oh, um, but um, God is good and I was able to find um, 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 someone to stand in as my surety and you know when you're growing and people don't believe in you because mm. you in Bloemfontein they're like how is this girl gonna get to Johannesburg and mm -hmm. study acting but my drama teacher he's not even family 
nothing. He said, I'll be your surety because I know you love this thing. Wow. Sure. And he was my surety and I came to Johannesburg to study acting and today I'm here sitting with you guys and talking about my journey. Yo, you are so, so determined though as well. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you have your own business, mm -hmm. a health food restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, shout out to you because you I'm, so I'm all about health food. Yes. So tell us why health food? Um, after I had my baby, obviously things shifted. Um, Kaba yes. went on the other side, <laughs> potholes yeah. everywhere. So I was like, you know what? Um, my husband uh, used to order food at Gorge for me uh, when when my mom left because my mom came. You know, in Sesotho, your, your mom would come and help you yes, after and having your child. Yes, mm. and feed you mutoho. Offer mutoho and whatnot so that... And basically make you bigger than bigger, you yeah. already are <laughs> yes. as a result of the baby. <laughs> yes. So she was taking care of me, so my mom had to go back to Bloemfontein. So now I'm left with the baby and my yeah. husband. Yeah. Yeah. So it was very, it was a very difficult time for me, especially I'm just, it's just me and the baby and it's, it's, mm. I'm a first time mother. So my husband would order food for, for me at Gorge. So that's how I fell in love with the brand and mm. we started our own Gorge in Stanton. So we're all about healthy food, yeah. um, organic, free range. But it's not your first rodeo when it comes wow. to businesses, right? Like you also I, yeah, help out with events tried, and billboards. Sweetie, and... I tried, I tried. <laughs> you know, when you're, starting, Fun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. when you're starting a company, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. You do it online at home. And then now Register. you have to work. And, and then what? now you have to do the things of the, of, of the, things. the pots that the company does. And then does. you go to some tax clearance yeah. certificate, tax clearance certificate. It was, <laughs> I've always wanted to own something, a business yeah. or, yeah. because acting, I felt like um, um, one seller is not enough, mm. especially in Joburg. So but I you thought, see, that's important. I think that's something to touch on because a lot of young people think like, oh, once I'm a star and a soapy, I'm, I'm made, you know, nah. I'm sort of for life. Yeah. Nah. I think that's important yeah. to help them realize is that you need to have multiple income streams to you survive. To. Yes. Wealth is not created through a single income stream. No, yeah. no, 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 and, and, and it's not enough, it's never enough, and it's not about you wanting, you Opulence. being greedy, yeah, no. Yeah. We also work in an industry where you can't mm -hmm. quite measure or quantify no. your, the, the, how, how much work you've done and mm. how brilliant mm. you are at mm. what you do, because we don't grow upwards, yes, you, no, you diversify, yes, you, you have to mm. add more talents and grow more and of grow your more, talents, yes. yeah. But mm. let's talk quickly then about that role of an actress and an actor in South Africa and why it is necessary for us to start these other businesses, because I'd imagine Imagine being an actor is one of the most vulnerable things you can do for an audience, mm -hmm. but at the same time, your entire fate is in the hands of a producer, a producer. or the next show or something. Yeah, that's so true. Does that people leave have you with to anxiety? like you or mm. cast you. Mm. Or, yeah. And people always think that if you're on a show for five years, you are permanent. There's no permanent mm. in this industry. The following day, they can come back and say, your character is committing suicide, then you don't have a job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know when you're reading a script in, to your, your character? Like, oh, what about how? I suddenly just no. stopped. I think mm. with every job, just make sure that you, you find other ways. We, you can't yeah. have one talent. We have different talents. Find a side hustle. Find something on the mm. side. Do you know what I find so touching about your story? Mm. You have um, this moment where you were studying and every day you'd walk to school and you'd walk past the SABC building mm -hmm. and you'd say to yourself, one day I'm going to be one of those people mm. who... Yes are working in a building like this. Yes, definitely. That's the only building I knew. I didn't know there's Sasani in other yeah. buildings. So <laughs> when I used to walk from Brixton to Evda, it was so hard. And every time I'd walk, I'd talk to myself and my God, I'm like, one day, I can't come, back, I can't come to Johannesburg and go back home mm. without getting my certificate. And going mm. back home and saying, my mom, Mama, I have mm. to work. Mm. So I used to tell myself, and, and sometimes people think, talking to yourself, you gotta watch like, no, it's you <laughs> telling yourself that it is possible. Mm. I will walk to Evda. I will finish my studies and one day I'll be what I want to. Mm. And I, every time I tell my mom this story, she cries because mm. I had to show her the distance from Brixton to yeah. Evda because yeah. there was no text and I didn't have money to, yeah. to, to go it's to. It's super far. It's far. It but I, I don't. Yeah. 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 I don't want to go to But listen, guys, on a serious note, I don't want young people to see this end and see, like, oh, well, she yeah. went through all that hardship. It's going to be fine in the end for me as well. They often mm -hmm. see the end and think that that's like sort of there was, it was just easy up until that point. And I don't want to paint that picture with mm -hmm. you because it really wasn't. Are there moments of failure for you? Were there times where you just felt like giving up? Yeah, I mean, after I finished, I had to go to auditions and I was not getting anything. Like you said, I'm not tall enough. I'm not, some producers will tell you you're not pretty enough. Mm -hmm. You've got and, acne. And nothing will make you feel like you're not enough, like an audition. Audition, mm -hmm. yeah. Or you go to an audition, <laughs> teach you, these girls are tall, they've got nice hair. Mm. When I say, I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. you like, and that time, <laughs> yeah, was yeah. and that time, it was a time where, how how's now weave you're not pretty enough mm. yeah only now we're starting to be comfortable more in our own skin and hair mm. and that time when you go to auditions 
we all looked the same. Mm. Same hair, yeah. same makeup. And I told myself that one day, let me just go to auditions with my natural hair. Mm. And I got my first ad. So it worked. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. And I think just being your authentic self yes. works. And mm. then taking your authentic self and Definitely. enhancing that yeah. versus yes. saying, I, I'm not right the way that I come. Mm -hmm. I've got to change yeah. myself and mm -hmm. be something else. Mm -hmm. So it's waiting for the right time, right place. I guess that's yeah. the journey of all creators. But then let's talk about your character herself. I mean, she's quite feisty. You're quite feisty. Yeah. Did they write the character around you? No, I'm joking. But, I, but I, I'm serious though, in terms of her, her style and your style, it was also quite cute to see that I think 2016, you gave birth and then your character gave, gave birth, birth in 2017. Yeah. How was that whole journey for you? It was amazing because um, it was not part of the story. Obviously, mm. I fell pregnant. You fell pregnant. pregnant. And then, Whoopsie. <laughs> Oopsie. And then they had to write it in the story. Mm. Um, um, so after I gave birth, so when I was pregnant, when I was six months, my character was like three months because they had mm. to find a way mm. to write it Yeah. In. Um, it was not easy because I worked throughout my pregnancy. Till I was eight months, I had to work. Doing. You must have been so tired. I was tired. Your, your neck is dark and the other, you've got patches. And, and you, I'm sure you were chowing that set food. <laughs> Yo. I'm Yo. sure you were eating that set food. I was. So um, for me to be in the Aww. same journey as Dintle, it was amazing because it's too close to home. Mm. And yes. also when she was in labor pains, I was like, ah, I know that. I know that, yeah. And so I killed it. You killed yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Those weren't fake. I mean, labor pains, there's Yo. nothing I like that. Yeah. yeah, I also saw God. I in saw fact, God, I yeah. saw... The end. I yeah. said angels. <laughs> and again, yeah. Whoa, I, yeah, surrendered. <laughs> I surrendered. <laughs> yes. um, I surrendered. I love that you do your, your, your Instagram posts. And mm. how do you come up with your ideas? And how do you see, why do you do it? Um, Coco Fridays. Yes. Um, I don't know how, okay, how we started, me and Zagani, she works w w with me at, at, at Scandal. So we, we how it started was we were talking about in-laws and we were just mm. joking around and saying that, have you noticed that as a girl, you always say, I want this guy who will cook for me and who will do one, two, three for me. Yeah. But when your brother does all those things to your girlfriend, it's witchcraft. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> but, you but you want the exact same guy. You want someone yeah. to open the door for you. But if your brother You're does, so, right. so I'm like, ah, let's record it. And every time I would record something, people would want more yeah, and yeah, more and yeah. more. So yeah. me, every time I'm around people, I observe, mm. I listen, and I always come up with stories. So, like yeah. Devon July, I knew that people are going to Devon July. Exactly. Most women are worried that their husbands or their boyfriends will cheat, cheat. when they get to Devon July. So I was like, yeah. let's just add humor to it. Mm. And you must continue to do it because we love it. So love you, it. you're producing really cool content. You're a brilliant actress and we're loving watching your work. You you're so clearly much. an entrepreneur, got side hustles on the go. You've got a positive spirit. You've got a family, but you're also quite involved in community work as well. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of charities have been focusing their energy on sanitary pads for girls in schools. Mm. It seems like there can never be enough of this never. happening. Mm -hmm. Why have you chosen that particular charity? Was it because it was trendy or is it something that's particularly close to you? It's particularly close to me because I'm a girl and I go on my period. And yeah. I know that I can only imagine and how difficult it is not being able to buy mm. um, sanitary yeah. towels. So when me and, and my friends came together and we said, Gamu came up with the idea that let's come together and, and maybe buy pets and mm -hmm. ask our friends, not even celebrity yeah. friends, just people you know around, yeah. so that we can go drop them off to any, any yeah. school. So that's how it started. And we came together, we used our own money, and then people nice. came. And then we went to Bloemfontein, we had an event. Mm. We asked our celebrity friends, please, people will take pictures with you. And they must just come with boxes and boxes of pets. Nice. And they did that. And we were able to help three schools in yeah. Bloemfontein. And you were hands wow, on on the ground. Beautiful. And we need hands to applaud on. that because a lot of celebs <laughs> do this kind of work and, like, oh, I'll post about the charity, already doing the work. I'll donate no, yeah, some money. You are on the yeah. ground, you know, getting your hands yes, dirty. No, I'll, I'll, I'm hands on. We're proud of you. Is it mm. fun playing a villain? I feel like villains get the best lines. They do. They do. They hey? <laughs> It, it's fun because uh, uh, Dintla is a very a different villain because she's very also funny. Mm -hmm. She's not smart, mm -hmm. but yes. when she wants when she wants something, she wants it, which, yeah. which I like about her. Even though I don't like the way she gets things, but I like the fact that she doesn't give up. Mm. It's it's very nice to play, and you get nice stories as well. You yeah. always totally. on the A story, and and, yes. and it's, 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 yeah. it's very nice. It's it's well, it's really good to be able to celebrate your afternoon express. Thank Keep doing you. the great work that you're doing, and if those Thank Instagram so posts stop, Bona. I'm coming after you, girl. La, la. I'm coming for <laughs> you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> after the break, we take a culinary trip to Japan with the traditional miso soup. Plus, later on, we catch up with renowned contemporary fashion designer Rich Mnisi, who has a new collection to show off.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're live on SABC3, although I should say konnichiwa, because vegetable broth can quite uh, be unattractive when it uh, comes to colour and can lack in both depth and flavour. So today, Clem comes uh, to the rescue with a delicious and all favourite Japanese dish called a miso broth that is not only good on the eyes, but packed with flavour, depth and all that nutrients to get through. And it's one of the things that I've never, ever managed to make myself because it seems so complicated. Well, it's not. It's about following a few basic principles. Once you get those right, yeah, but like, you'll be happy. If you showed me all of this and said make no, a no, miso, no. I would not know. I'm putting all this in front of you because I actually wanted to see all the ingredients oh. and the little different elements of it. But let's get started on actually how we actually made this broth. Cool. We started off the same thing with a mirepoix. Yes, even in Asian cuisine with a mirepoix. The difference is I coated them in some miso paste miso paste, which is, you actually, what is it? You know this? I don't know. You too, Dan. What's miso paste? Like dehydri it's dehydrated actually, miso soup? It's actually just soybean, which oh, has been water. fermented and reduced. Yeah, similar ah. to our tofu. I see, so it's basically tofu, but the liquid version and fermented. Well, I'm going to just say yes, to keep it like, like oh, it nice and nice. simple. Yeah. Very, very nice. Yeah. And it aids in good gut health, which is actually what this whole meal is all about. Cool. We're having some fermented food. I'll help you toot and all of that stuff. Just get it all out there. Just, you know what? Look, <laughs> Back so to the recipe. vegetables have been roasted in some mm. nice miso paste, and you can smell that. It's quite like a different smell. It's very savory. Yes, earthy okay? as well. Mm. So then two, and you can kind of see the texture as well. Yeah. Something's different there, and that's the miso. To that, we added um, okay, we added that to a pot with a bit of water, some dried porcini mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Very meaty, very, very Full meaty. Full of flavor, very chewy. They're yeah. nice. They're a very good meat supplement, by the way. If you're looking for something that's a good meat supplement that has the same texture as a good yeah. steak, this is it. That's the guy. So that's the dried version. Here is the sh so hydrated shiitake, version. shiitake yeah. mushroom, sorry. This is the, the fresh version, how you would get it in stores. And then I've got some kombu, which is a seaweed, different to like normal nori, which you'd have when you have sushi. This is kombu, and it's dried like this. And you see, it's even got the salt on there. So the let's take them straight from the ocean and like dry it on a hanger. What, what would you want to have? Yum. Yes, exactly. It's got it fish, is yum. Fish stuff so, on it. Yeah. No, it's not, man. And this would go into the broth and actually flavor it. It's Salt delicious. It it's nice. really, really delicious. And fish stuff on it. Am I allowed to like nibble the end? Please I've do. I've never tasted it before. Please do. Give it a little taste. Mm. It's oh, very wow. salty. Mm. But, but it actually doesn't have that same fishy flavor as a nori sheet does. It's delicious. It is mm. delicious. Cool. Now, wow. Dan, let's talk about... Let me borrow these chopsticks real quick. Let's talk about these little mushrooms. You know when you mm, see it in Japanese cartoons or when you see them on TV, the mushrooms always have this little, like, cross in them. Okay? To be honest, I've never seen that in my life. But, okay, Dan. yes, I'll, I'll pretend. For your okay, sake, cool. yes, I've but seen that. it doesn't actually just come like that. They actually make it... The, the, there's some prep that goes <gasps> into it. Really, Clem? Dan, you control yourself, okay? Else you're not going to get any Misa. <laughs> so, Bonnie's really going to try and tackle me for it, she said. She, no, Bonnie's done. She's got this. You cut a little cross, and you cut across again. It's all oh, about the presentation. And because it's so meaty, it's quite... A, you're actually able to do all that. Yo, look collapse. at that. How cute is nice. that? Cool. Into the pan. Let's talk about the other mushrooms that we got. That was a... What, what mushroom was that? Shiitake mushroom. Shiitake mushroom. This one is a exotic mushroom. It is a, <laughs> it's a shimiji mushroom. Shimiji. Okay, I'm going to break that up. That's going to go in there. And then? Uh, shiji. Shim no, no, it's no? an oyster. 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 This one's in English. It's an oyster mushroom. Damn. We're just going to slice it up a little bit. Again, these are really, really meaty. Yeah. You're not going to miss any meat at all in this broth. I always buy that pack from Willys because it's got the combination of them. And you use them for breakfast. Every morning you get a different kind of mushroom for breakfast. That's I do. I, I agree with you. Just don't leave them in the fridge for too long. Okay, they'll start growing, <laughs> getting involved with other ingredients. Okay. not that gross. No, no, no. But it happens. You never know. Yeah, I've got some egg noodles and mm -hmm. I actually cooked it in the broth. Don't go and boil a new pot of Could water. Could you use glass noodles if you wanted to? Like Egg uh, noodles, glass noodles, rice anything. noodles, okay. what vermicelli, you no vermicelli noodles, whole wheat noodles. If you're noodles. vegan, you couldn't use the egg ones, but you could definitely use the other ones. So, yeah, so this is this stuff. is rice, exactly. Then, in goes our broth. Nice and delicious. This is really, really good. Yummy. It's seriously, like, I fooled people in the loft today. They actually thought this was 100% beef. It's not. What? It's not. It's all so, vegetable. And he mentioned the idea of having these multiple nutrients in here. So you think about it, you've got your mushroom in there, which is your vegetables. You've got all of your nice salts and things there for your sodium. Uh -huh. You've got the carbs in there as well. And you're going to be adding all the other ingredients in there too. So exactly. So and it's, this is actually, like value. I said, it's all aiding good mm. gut health. Everything's nice and fermented, all those flavors in there. Mm. In go our mushrooms, nice and crispy. Texture's oh, very yum. big, very big in Asian cuisine. So we're playing on that a lot. Then we're going with some tofu. Again, that's just the soybean and water. Cool. No funky business. Good protein source for our vegan and vegetarian friends. There we go. It has no flavor, okay? Mm. So you're gonna try and pair it with some like, flavors, some textures. Yeah. It picks up the flavor of what it's immersed yeah. in. So if you immerse it in sort of a beefy flavor, it'll taste like beef. Exactly. Crispy fried ginger, a little bit of spring onion. Wow. 
This is and fancy, dude. This is some more fermented chili paste. Actually, it's not an expensive dish at all. It's really quite budget friendly. <sighs> well, I don't that. know. Not about budgets. The only ingredients are in this. You could have stopped at the mushrooms. I would have been satisfied. Yo. No. Exactly. But you know, it's all about the topping. All about the visual. If you and go rewind to every episode of Afternoon Express where we've cooked, Clem does not know what over the top doesn't mean. He always goes over the top. What's that? What? What's like? No. What? Looks no? delicious. You've done a good job. This is you. good. This is good. Danny boy, this is for you. Me so have this actually... one. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> uh, simply SMS the keyword broth to double three six five zero. You can get this recipe sent directly to your mobile device. SMSs are charged at one rand fifty. No free SMSs apply. This recipe is amazing. It's one to keep on your books. Listen, after the break uh, in the kitchen, uh, we're making the ultimate party cookie that's loaded with chocolate chips, peanut butter, and so much more chocolate. It's not to be missed. And did I mention that there's a cookie? Espresso is your feel-good breakfast show only on SABC3. With our daily recipes, we keep you inspired in the kitchen. And make sure you call into our culinary hotline every Wednesday for tips from South Africa's top food experts. Set your alarm, put the kettle on, and join us for three hours of feel-good breakfast entertainment. Wake up the right way only with Espresso weekdays from 6 to 9 a.m. on SABC3. The, the stage, stage is yours. yours. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Take a moment in between all the madness and join us as we turn it up with the ultimate Super M party cookie. It's the perfect treat to have with a wonderful warm cup of Super M. To get the list of ingredients you'll need for this tasty recipe, SMS that keyword Clover to 33650. SMSs do cost one run fifty each and no free SMSs apply. Clem. Mm -hmm. We're about to get this party started. Oh, it's here. crazy. It's a crazy, crazy recipe. We started with some flour and some well, we've got salt in there. And then we've got some sugar in it goes. We're starting it with a basic cookie dough. All basic right. cookie dough. It's basic cookie dough, but this recipe is not basic by any means. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Don't get it twisted. Don't it's not get it basic. Twisted. We're going with two sugars. With normal sugar, which is gonna give uh -huh. that sweetness. Okay. Ooh, no? Yeah. You don't like it? Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting okay, to get more. Okay, got the brown sugar. Yeah. That's gonna give you that nice fudgy texture. Okay. I, I don't want those cookies see. that snap. It's gotta like. You gotta like. Mm, slow what does treacle do? What if you were treacle. to add treacle? Also, it gives you a more fudgy texture and a more caramelized flavor in the in the cookie itself. Mmm. Mmm. See, now you're happy. I like it. There we a go. Lot. Cool. Butter going in. Are you happy with the butter? Yeah, happy with the butter. Happy with the butter. Happy with them butters. Then we got a free range egg and some vanilla going okay. in. Okay. Okay. Now we let the machine do. The work? The work. How did our parents do it? I don't know, they just... Yeah. 
Maybe but I mean, we, we're all still having to do it because not all of us have this fancy machine True at story. our houses. True story. I agree right? with you. <laughs> okay, so it keeps on mixing, keeps on mixing, you get this nice pliable dough. I say always put it in the fridge first. Let all the ingredients get to know each okay. other. Very important. Then we start packing it in. You can do it by hand. Get the kids in. Everybody's washed their hands. Yeah. Yeah. You just start packing the dough in. And then okay. while I'm doing this, talk about the toppings that we got there. Hmm. The idea for this is that actually all your favorite cookies, we're going to do okay. in one giant so we've got one. some sprinkles here. Uh -huh. We've got some marshmallows, some uh, Oreo cookies. Just straight peanut up butter. Pe peanut straight butter. Up pe oh, yes. wow. I was about to say caramel. And then this is just milk chocolate, right? It is. And M and M's. There we go. So what we're mm -hmm. gonna do is, I, you got a spoon, I got a spoon. We're gonna just start decorating this guy. We're gonna go crazy. Okay. Like I mean, let's just try and keep some order. Like this is your one, no, no. Let's try. Because you got crazy. I'm gonna do a little bit of the sprinkles over here. Okay. What do you wanna add? And I'll go with these chocolate little. Okay. We can make bowl. like a pizza thing. You know you could. Like just section it like. Ooh, look at ooh. Pizza I, was, I thought we were getting in rough. But look at Bonnie coming in. Everything's gotta be. No, there's gotta be structure, Clem. Yeah. It's got to be structured. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Because you've already got a crazy one over there. It is crazy. So do you want to know how I ended up using the Super M for this guy? Because, I mean, we're just having fun right how? now. How? How? So remember we made those, those maguinha on Tuesday oh, with a chocolate sauce? so delicious. With the cream and the chocolate to make the chocolate ganache? I can still feel them on my can hips. Can you? Yeah. Can No wonder. You, okay, no, but it's fine. <laughs> you know, when I said all that sugar, you were like, ah, it's happening again. <laughs> it's fine. So what I did was I took Super M. Yeah. And I heated it up in the microwave. Okay. Not to drink, because by the way, you can drink it nice and warm out of the microwave. Nice. I poured it over the chocolate chips and I made a beautiful Super M ganache. So, Ooh. I'm just gonna add some chocolate love. Look at you, yeah. so creative. Chocolate Super M ganache, just like that. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. take a rift of a dough. By the way, this dough will keep in the freezer for about, oh, no, wow. no lie, six months. Six months? Yeah. Just make sure you like seal it properly. Top it again. And also, kids just eat straight up cookie dough, don't I they? I know. I, I missed that in my childhood. I didn't, I didn't know about that. No, I didn't eat cookie dough. No, is it, no. A, is it okay? Should we let them? Yeah, you know these kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That goes to the oven. Marshmallows, I think marshmallows are I pretty mean, my, cool. My son, my eight-year-old son told me today that while he was on holiday, he started an Instagram account. Oh, and now? Yeah, and his dad helped him start an in Instagram account, and he's got three posts. And, and I'm, like, how many followers. I'm like, what is going on? But now you, you are told, eight. Now the whole, you told all those Africa, you know what they're going to do. They're going to go and find him. Gonna, at the end of the day, he's, no, he's got like, a very clever handle. Oh, okay. Yeah. Check the end of the day, 60,000 followers. But anyway, so, so <laughs> we got it. up and then we pop that in the oven. 20 minutes later, it comes out. I thought it was some extra toppings. More than ganache. Yeah, that's the way. I love way. it. I absolutely love it. It looks delicious. That's how we win mm, on a Thursday. Mm, mm, you win. You won. Done. You won the whole week. Tasty and sweet and always a treat. Remember to SMS the keyword Clover to 33650 to get this recipe sent to your device. And in case you missed any of these steps, here's a quick sweet recap. That looks so sweet. And speaking of, there's some sweet TV viewing for you on SABC3. It's all about presenter search on three tonight as the remaining contestants take on the challenge of top billing. With their growing fame in the spotlight, the top 10 were recently invited to a Capitech Masterclass, a platform for inspiration and knowledge sharing. And here's a quick snippet of their experience. To help the top 10 presenter search on three contestants build a personal brand that's as successful commercially as it is creatively, they were recently treated to a Capitech Masterclass with invaluable insights from industry leaders, hosted at the beautiful Radisson Blue Hotel in Cape Town. So good morning, top 10. 
we want to be more than just a sponsor. We want to make sure that regardless of what happens in this competition, you leave with something. Today was the Capitec Masterclass. They were teaching us how to live better. What a beautiful day. There's so much to learn and it never stops. The top 10 found this platform for inspiration and knowledge sharing invaluable. With these skills, they can only go on to build more powerful, effective personal brands. My favorite part of today was definitely learning around personal branding. Your personal brand is what people say about you when you are not in the room. We learned elements that we can apply into our actual lives, not only for our brand, but just our state of being. You are your best publicist. No one knows you better than you. And that's your power, guys. A lot of the time, we're so excited to just, you know, get into the industry and start working, and we don't really consider what it means to sign a contract. I hadn't thought about the business side of things and what exactly it entails. It entails more than just standing on camera, in front of camera. I've always seen contracts as this huge, intimidating monster. But now that I see it as a conversation, I think I can tackle it better. You are influencers in society already. You're all winners and we all want you to succeed here and beyond. In tonight's episode of Presenter Search on 3, the remaining contestants are challenged with a top billing takeover to see if they, are, they have what it takes to host this lifestyle magazine show. Catch all the action from this episode tonight at 7.30 on SABC3. And don't forget, if you missed tonight's episode, you can watch the repeat on Saturday at 12 p.m. Might be as much action as Bax is giving us today. This Thursday evening, catch the presenter search on three top billing takeover. Contestants are given a taste of the good life with their very own segment on this flagship lifestyle magazine show as they showcase fine dining, celebrity interviews and cutting edge design. Who will own the spotlight and show you they have what it takes? Find out on Presenter Search on 3, Thursday at 7.30 on SABC3. The stage is yours. If you do just one thing this year, bank better in 2018 with Capitec. We focus on fashion after the break as we catch up with designer Rich Mnisi to see what he's been up to. Plus, he shows off some items from his latest collection, which is... If you do just one thing this year, bank better in 2018. Get the Capitec credit card with a limit of up to 150,000 Rand with personalized interest from 12.9% based on your credit profile and affordability. Bank better to live better with Capitec.
Warm welcome back to Afternoon Express on this Thursday afternoon. We're live on SABC3. Hope you guys are following our journey on Instagram as well as on Twitter. Don't forget to use the hashtag Afternoon Express so we can find all your comments uh, because I'm pretty sure for our next guest there's lots of love that's going to come through. In just a few short years, Richard Nisi has established himself as one of South Africa's fashion heavyweights. Indeed, and his work has been featured in most of the top publications, including Marie Claire Al and Vogue Italy. His latest collection titled Noir, Malumul, Noir Mula Mula <laughs> was just unveiled recently. It's a tribute to mothers across Africa and was inspired by his late great-grandmother. Did I say it right eventually? It's Noir Mula Mula. Oh, mm. Noir Mula Mula. Yeah. Okay. So how, I can see how being called rich is working out for you. <laughs> <laughs> it is working out for you. <laughs> well, not yet, but yeah. <laughs> no, it will come. It has to come. What I'm interested about the most recent journey you've taken is besides, obviously, because obviously the fashion industry loves you, you're the darling of South African fashion, um, but the sort of like a <laughs> boxing that South Africans like to do is like, oh, you're a fashion designer, right? Mm. And you're kind of trying to say, no, I'm a creative. I produce a lot of stuff. So tell us about the, the lines you produce that are outside of fashion. Um, so recently, um, so I decided to extend Wamla Mula from just fashion and introduce um, furniture. So I collaborated with Southern Guild and we created like um, this, um, this couch, which is a, like a physical representation of Mamla Mula. So it's like mm. her wow. body. And yeah, and then that's like, this too is her tear, is her eye, uh, with her eye, with her pupil and like, um, the puddle is like her tears and like that represents that her tears went in vain. So, so oh, that that was rich. an extension of a brand. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is mesmerizing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh um, so, yeah. So that's where I'm like moving the brand towards like a multidisciplinary yeah. state, a yeah. space where it focuses on just like just general yeah. art, you know. But yeah. mothers like, and grandmothers. There were, there you, I heard you said that it was her tears, and you mentioned the idea that it was mm. like a grandmother's and great grandmother's. Well, my great grandmother. Yeah. yeah. So that particular couch was for the story of your great grandmother. Yeah. Um, mm. So with her. Um, I never got to meet her. There's no photos of her. We don't know when she was born, but of course she raised my grandmother and my mother. Mm. Um, so it was just like picking up stompies from like stories yeah. about her. And that's how like I came about like the, the collection. So the collection is really just like ideas I have of her or how she makes me feel. So it's almost like wow. from a child's eye. Um, so with this lookbook, um, Ricardo and I wanted to like almost like go into like the ancestral realm and like look for her. So that's why they're rotating. I they're looking see. from Mwam Mula, Mula. They're looking from the, for the truth. So that's like just me looking for her and like Dude, looking for my so identity. Beautiful. So that yeah. So beautiful. I mean, when you sit down and you conceptualize your work, do you, what comes first, the concept or the designs? Or is it like a, is it interdependent and it just yeah. kind of? Yeah, it's interdependent, yeah. but usually just the concept. Um, so, but with Mwam Mula, Mula, like since I started like Mwam Mula, Mula, which started like last year, Mm. Um, June. I just want to continue the story maybe for another three years because I, I realized that like there's a lot of stories that we don't know um, and even the next collection is based on that and I'll be going around um, South Africa like um, asking families just any family like stories about like their grandmothers or their mother any like wow. how they were raised whether it was big or small. Um, I have this one friend Manchester um, her grandmother um, was was a domestic and and Manchester and Chesty. Yes, mm. Chesty. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. So with with her grandmother, like her, her employer gave her ice cream and she licked it and then she put it in her bag to save it for her child. And by the time she got home, it had completely oh. melted. But it spoke to like the idea of sacrifice. Um, which, I mean, all mothers are known for. So it was mm. like, it's paying like tribute to that and honoring that. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Do you have a muse or do you have a couple of muses? Uh, I mean, the idea is my muse, like, right. so my, my great grandmother. Um, but I mean, in a, I, yeah, a living human being, I'd say my mother. Mm. <laughs> wow, yeah, what is definitely. she like? She's incredible. <laughs> 
I mean, that's the only word I can describe her as. Well, she's clearly raised you with an intense morality and a sense of sort of other and of story and of past and of influence. And I think that that's really coming through in the work that you're doing. And I find it interesting because the more I've interacted with the fashion world, the more I've tried to sort of almost disengage myself because it can be perceived to be super sort of elite and catty and all those other kinds of things. And Mm. you always remain sort of kind and gentle and shy and always focused on the message as opposed to the brand. And I think that that's something really special about you. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I want to know where that, where, where, where you said it was your mother that inspired you to be like this. Did she raise you to be a child that always is focused on, you know, the things beyond monetary value or the things beyond the Yeah. Now? No, definitely. I, I, and I think also just like growing up and looking into the fashion industry, it's like it's very scary and very intimidating. Mm. And yeah. I guess I, I never wanted to become that or like that didn't appeal to me at any point. Yeah. Um, for me, like, I, I just don't want to get lost in it because it's yeah. very easy. Yeah. Um, so it's just like, you know, staying true to who you are and like also focusing on the work because mm. I mean, without the glitz and the glamour. Right. Yeah, exactly. and, and will us mere mortals be able to, to um, access uh, your garments and the <laughs> from the rain? Well, some of us can't in any case, Can we too find short, them but... anywhere in stores? <laughs> yes, good. Awesome. Awesome. Because that white mm. one, ooh, I'm eyeing thing. it, I'm eyeing it. Yeah, yeah. that's stunning. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's have a look at some of the looks that we've got. We'll introduce our first look today, which is so beautiful because it's full of colour and it's full of South Africa. And I see a fork. Well, hair comb and a fork. Uh-huh. You got it right. Tell <laughs> us about this look. Yeah, I mean, so like it's like very like deserty. So like it was inspired by like again the hair comb and also um, this like idea of like. What do you call like um, the fork where you used to like um, you get the hay, garden like, fork. whatever? Mm, garden yeah, fork, garden yeah. Fork, so yeah. Oh, garden like, pick. So it, it was just like that relationship between the two, and also like it also looked like looks like a cactus. So like I just like that. Yo, I can touch on like three things and at the same time. And an afro comb, hey. Yeah. Right. And you've got the different it's textures beautiful. and things in there. It's multiple pieces. You can take the bits off and, you know, just like mix it up with other things. It's mm. such a versatile piece and it just it just screams like elegance, I think, for me. Wow. It's yeah. stunning. It's I stunning. imagine you wearing this in the show. I'm going to wear that. Thank yeah. you. If you're, if the me- <laughs> I demand to wear that. Okay. And then we'll Jen's, that Jen's fashion as well is also going back to sort of roots of the African design of, you know, that animalistic sort of feel. Yes. Yeah, so I, with this I wanted, like, I'm all about, like, the reason I put my name on clothing is almost like um, to solidi- like solidify the idea that we can stand internationally and, like, confidently and, like, we can be within luxury spaces without being questioned. Yeah. Um, so that's why, like, I almost, like, always put my name and that's why, like, putting my name on a, such an iconic print, like a zebra print, mm-hmm. is, like, was like, also, like, you know, fit into that idea. Absolutely. So let's talk about this one here. Wow. I mean, this is me trying to like do bridal without doing bridal. (laughs) (laughs) Bridal without the overcoat. (laughs) Yeah, so it's just a coat, uh, a pair of wide leg um, sheer pants and also like a a matching corset. Um, Yeah, and I also just really like the the proportions and also like... It's stunning. It's shaped beautifully. I mean, it's gorgeous. I, I so was, architectural. Yeah, the, the female designs are very feminine. They are, they are beautifully feminine. They shape the woman beautifully. And they've got the frills and the bowls that really just show off women. And your men's designs as well, I, I guess everybody's moving into that space of androgyny as well. Mm. Um, are we going to see a lot more of this transition in your, in your clothing, in your fashion design towards that fluidity across, across the genres? Yeah, well, like whenever I design it, like, Actually, only style towards the end. Like I decide what's men's wear yeah. and what's women's wear, but I really just like Could just anything. make clothes, yeah. like beautiful clothes. And then st- I think people are moving to that space of like just like being yourself and like yeah. just dressing and identifying mm-hmm. the way yeah. you want to identify. Mm-hmm. Like it's so it's like yeah, it's just enforcing yeah. that and also like it's just relevant to the time of being Amazing. yourself. Yeah. Completely. Fi- fi- final thing yeah. for me is, can you design something for short people? You're not short. <laughs> 
<laughs> that thing would drag on the floor if I wore that thing down now. Yeah, but it looks Rich, amazing. I really, I really love really, what you're it's, doing. It's and incredible. I think, and I'm very proud of, of what South yeah. African designers are doing, and I'm so glad you're part of, mm. of that canon. Yeah, yeah and good luck in, in overseas. I think it's in New York, right? They're going to be they're going to be putting this up in the Southern Guild. So good luck yeah. with the, that whole showcase. I think it's going to be exciting to see you just being proud of something that you've put together. Yeah. That you can be so damn proud of, dude. Thank you. Well done. We'll be back <laughs> after the break with our guests from today's show, so don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We've got our beautiful guests on the couch with us. And thank you for spending your Thursday afternoon in our loft. <gasps> Guys, mm -hmm. you are just so inspiring. You're incredible. Thank We've you. We've loved having you. And thank everyone you so on, online is so inspired by your work. And I've noticed... Um, some of your colleagues are very supportive. They are. Do you guys have quite a close-knit family relationship? We do. Um, every time, we, I mean, we spend time together when we run in dialogue and stuff. Humozo, Hungani, I know they're watching me and they're supporting me and they're tweeting about me. So um, I'm grateful it's to It's beautiful. Her. Yeah, has to be diva. Girl, sometimes when you get to work, yes. you find someone, when you say hello, wow, buzz, uh, yeah. hi, uh. No. Blue ticks you. Yeah, Just blue ticks no, you. We, they're so nice. Yeah. They, yeah. And also, people expect women to not get along. Yeah. You know, and mm. it's it's so old and mm. it's boring. And mm. I think we can really just try harder mm. as women. Mm. I, I'm really excited to have the both of you sitting on the couch at this particular point in this conversation, in this week, in this country that we live in, with a lot of young kids really desiring to break up and break out into the sort of creative world and, and not to show of themselves, don't believe in themselves. Parents and families are restrictive of that kind of you know lifestyle. And you two are shining. Exactly 
examples of humility in a creative space with talent that backs you up behind that. So I think it's an, it's an important opportunity for us to be able to talk about and talk to those young people. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your thoughts for the young black South African who really wants to do what you guys do but feels like they're restricted from doing so? Um, for me, I always say what you want wants you. If you want good things for yourself, you'll get them. So it doesn't matter where you come from, whether you're from Kohai, Dimukuku, or it doesn't matter. What matters is what you want and what you want That's wants you. I wanted mm. acting and acting wanted me and I'm acting. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's very important to believe in yourself. And also, I always say to parents, if it wasn't for my mom supporting me and going to school every time I'm performing, she wouldn't have understood that mm. my child loves acting and she is talented. Yeah. So every performance, she would be there <clears throat> and she supported me. Mm. So I think parents should start supporting their kids every time when there's performance at school, they should go and attend and yeah. watch their kids. Yeah. They will understand why they want to do mm. whatever they want to Success do. doesn't come from being what you're not. It comes from being no. more of who you are. Definitely. And I think if parents can acknowledge that, they can stop forcing their kids down this alley that's just going to cause true. them to fail. Yeah. And yourself, yeah. Rich? Well, actually what she's saying is actually like quite true because um, I remember even when I wanted to start, my mother was not like having fashion. Mm. Like, she was just like, because it's frivolous. I mean, it looks frivolous from the outside, mm. but like after I convinced to an her, extent, she even right? told, yeah, yeah. Uh, she even told me she's like it's the best thing she's ever let me do. Like, wow, that's beautiful. Um, so I, I guess like the only thing to add on to that is just like hard work and like, and not getting lost in it, you know, mm. because even when you know it is close and it, and it is tangible, you can't like get lost in in it because. Just yeah. Mm. Something I, I, I worry mm. about, though, um, especially in this generation, is that people kind of want their dreams, they chase after them, they hustle, they work hard, and then they get them, and it then becomes about how lavish your lifestyle can become. We show and, them that I, I made it. I feel like we don't, yeah, we don't talk enough about once you're there, how do you maintain, how do you grow? And build for the future. And mm. how do you leave a legacy, mm. you know? Any advice That's concerning right. that? Oh, that's deep. I think for me, it's just stay true to yourself. Like you say, especially the social mm. media is not even helping because I see Bonnie posting this car. I'm thinking, she's been in the industry longer mm. than I am. Why am I competing with her? Mm. I think the most important thing is just stay true to yourself and be content. Like, appreciate gratitude. Like some people, like, daddy, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, I also think you can't rely on like your past successes too much mm. yeah. because people like, yeah. I think that's when people, you know, start losing it because they think we've made it. But have you like, mm. I think there's, there's always room for improvement. I think mm. even when you've reached, I don't know what peak, but yeah. the peak. Um, there's more you can there's do. More there's more to be had. Or there's more. Uh, there's another way to impact someone else. Maybe it's not about you at that point. Um, so it's just like keeping in yeah. mind that you can't rely on your past successes. You're only as good as your last job, really, yeah. in this industry, especially yeah. in the creative spaces. And there's yeah. like people think that you've made it because you can buy yourself a Beamer or something like that. I mean, you, you've made it when you feel what you've set out for yourself is achieved. Um, I know there's so much to do. You guys are going to go take the world by storm, and, and I think that that's what's exciting. People get so wrapped up in like you know, it's that one-hit wonder thing. I released one good song, and I'm a rap you know, yeah, made yeah. yeah, yeah. What's your dream role and who is the one person you'd like to design for? Thank mm. yeah. you. <laughs> 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 um, uh, wow. I don't know. There's so many people. There's so many great people. I have no idea. But yeah, like, me, also. of course. Michelle yeah. Obama. When? Le nane. <laughs> I don't know. Mora, even. <laughs> 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 for me, I don't know. So many. Um, all I can say is, where's my camera? Mm. I, I want a movie. <laughs> movie. I want you in movie. I know you want me. Yes. So it doesn't matter yes. what role. Movie. Yes. I want you in movie. Yes. You Good. want me. <laughs> mm. I love yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> so tomorrow we sit down with former leader of the opposition in parliament, Lindiwe Mazibugo. Plus we enjoy a live performance by 15-year-old artist, Lissandra. It's going to be a great show tomorrow. And I don't think it can get any better than today, but it is going to hopefully try. So we'll see you again tomorrow live on SABC 3, 4.30 to 5. 30 to, uh, for more of Afternoon Express as we have these important conversations. But keep it happening between now and tomorrow on social media, hashtag Afternoon Express. Good night, Happy South Africa. Eating. God bless.
Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.